Thomas was born April 13, 2021, and because of his heart defect, he spent six weeks in the NICU until he got his G-tube surgically placed and he was able to leave and finally meet his big sister. Thomas was doing great until one day he went blue and had to be life flighted to the hospital for a UTI. It's okay, baby. He's in good hands. His heart could not keep up. He came home and fully beat the UTI, but sadly, his heart function continued to slowly decline until we had to bring him in a few months later. This is the story of Thomas's open heart surgery. So we're here in the hospital. Thomas was admitted about three days ago on Sunday. Today's Tuesday, right? <laughs> Today's Wednesday. Okay, so he's been here almost four days, right? Um, I have no concept of time anymore. We brought him in just because, I don't know, we weren't feeling good about how he was acting. Nothing major, but just we felt like he was breathing a little heavier and we thought, oh, just be, better be safe than sorry. Like the worst that can happen is I'll just tell us to come back home. Uh, so David took him and they ended up giving him oxygen right away. And, uh, He's been here ever since. They admitted him to the hospital. He's been on oxygen. They've tried to wean him off with no success, though he is on a little bit less um, oxygen than he was uh, when he first was admitted. Um, so we've kind of just been trying to figure out what's going on. He tested negative for all major respiratory viruses, uh, negative for COVID, negative for any kind of infection. Um, so we are just kind of pointing to the fact that it's probably his heart um, because he does does have a complete uh, AV canal defect um, we're kind of just assuming that it's his heart kind of showing the defect and he just needs a surgery so um, today they told us that we're going to be moved to Kaiser in LA um, and take it from there. We're gonna meet the surgeon and kind of see what he thinks. And we're just praying that he's gonna get his surgery soon. Um, they've told us that they don't really have room this week. And we'll kind of see how that lands. If he seems like a better candidate or a more urgent situation than anyone they have scheduled, um, he, they, he might get bumped up, but um, we're kind of just waiting to, for a bed to open up in LA so that we can head over there. Um, but he's doing good. I mean, it's actually a pretty good scenario considering he's still healthy um, as far as everything else goes. Uh, it's just his heart and his uh, oxygen, which is all manageable for now. Um, but it's making them take him way more seriously. Um, regarding his surgery and everything. So I'm gonna show you guys how he's doing. He's sleeping right now. He's been so cute. Um, I feel bad for him that he's stuck in a bed. You know, he's just getting more active. He's five months old and he's, you know, rolling over a lot and being on his tummy a lot, um, playing a lot. And so he's, him being stuck in this bed kinda is a bummer for him, but he's been taking it really well. Um, and we're proud of him, so. I'll bring you over to see him. He just got to sleep, but he's been doing pretty well. This is his little bunny that he we've been bringing to the hospital with him whenever he goes. And uh, he loves it. It's cuddly, it kind of has a rattle in it. <laughs> so it's the perfect thing. We also have a bunch of little toys trying to keep him occupied. <laughs> And of course, he's still got his brace on, so he's doing pretty good. I will try and update whenever we have a change, maybe once we get over there, once we're on our way. Um, how you old that, babe? <laughs> you sleep? <laughs> yeah, I think we're all really tired. David probably more than anyone. He gets the least sleep, but how are you feeling about how everything is going. Good, I'm glad that things are moving. We've had some yeah. amazing doctors and nurses here that have really yeah. helped advocate for us. Yep. That's been great. So yeah. hopefully uh, 
get the surgery done this week. Let's do it. Yeah, we're kind of uh, at a place where we're like, yeah, we're ready. We uh, don't want to go home. We don't want them to say it. Like, you don't want them to come off oxygen briefly and then them just say like, oh, he's good. Like, they'll call you. We want to get this fixed. I've been telling everyone it's gonna be hard for them to turn me down in the flesh <laughs> once I'm over there. And that they, if they try and tell me like he's not gonna get the surgery, I will lose my mind. So they're gonna have to fight a mama off if <laughs> there's a problem. Anyway, it's a pretty good scenario considering he's sick, he has a hole in his heart. It's not going away, so it needs to be fixed. And this is kind of the little push that the doctors all needed to get him taken seriously. So in a weird way, we're grateful for it, but it is very nerve wracking. I'll keep this video updated so that I can show everyone how it went down. <laughs> and yeah, we will continue on. Update, they called me this morning. Um, I was planning on getting there at 10 because they said that transport team doesn't even start they're not even like there until 10, I guess. So I was running a little late. They called me at like 10, 20 and I was still at my mom's trying to like drop Reagan off and do all that. And they're like, okay, the transport team's here. Okay. And nobody told me like that they were come like, oh, okay, they, there's a bed open. They're coming. Like nobody gave me any heads up. So I was a little blindsided by that. I mean, I knew it was gonna happen, but just I thought I'd have a little more heads up. So we kind of missed the window of being there f with him when they came, which is fine. Like we can't even go in the ambulance because of COVID anyway, but it was just made it a little more chaotic, but that's okay. We're happy that he's getting there. <sighs> We're on our way to LA, feeling very anxious. We might, we probably won't see Reagan again. so just like saying goodbye to her, trying to make sure she has everything she needs. I don't know, how are you feeling? Anxious. Yeah. It's like such a weird feeling because it's like, I want him to have it, but I also don't want it, like, it to happen at the same time. No, like, I, I want it to happen. I, I want it to happen, no, for sure. Like it has to happen, so I want it to happen now. But just the idea that of what they're gonna be doing is, terrifying but hoping that like we get in soon and praying that they don't send us back because that would be awful but I'm just hoping that the fact that they're sending us there all the way to LA is like a good sign so we're just off trying to get there as soon as we can and feel everything out and then I'll come back and tell you all what's going on what? What? Honey? Oh no, honey. So we're here in LA. Thomas has been here for almost 24 hours um, and we're just kind of waiting to see what's gonna happen. Um, we talked to a cardiologist yesterday. Today, luckily, someone from s surgery came and said, kind of like, there's a couple spots open on Monday. We're trying to get him in there, but there's like a lot of logistically going on. So not to get our hopes up. Anyway, it's very clear that Thomas needs his surgery. We're just kind of waiting to see if it's going to be next week. Is it going to be the week after that? And if it's going to be in two weeks, do we, we stay here? Like until then, do we try and take him home? Which scares me, but you know, it's hard for him to be in here, like hardly moving. He's got all, like the IV in him and like all that uncomfortable stuff. Um, I would hate for him to be just kind of chill in here for a while so yeah we're hopefully going to talk to the surgeon today who will be able to kind of give us a more definite plan we spent the night here like there's no showers there's no like there's like this couch thing that i'm 
sitting on that like kind of folds out into the bed so we slept on that it was so uncomfortable yeah that's kind of where we're at i'll kind of give a little tour of the room this is where we're at there's his little crib and his little feeding thing um there's dad <laughs> and um that's what we slept on last night the cool thing is like they have pretty decent food here and like a menu and all these things so it's kind of nice He's just chilling right now. I don't want to be too loud next to him. But he's just sleeping. So he's been kind of out of it since we got here. Um, I think just the transfer took a lot out of him. And, you know, he's been in the hospital for almost a week, like five days. So, um,. I don't know, it's hard to see your kid showing signs of congestive heart failure, like, it's not fun. So it's been emotional, it's been hard, but we're really grateful that he's in the best place he possibly could be in for this situation. So that's where we're at now, hoping to get some more news soon. Hi. <laughs> Here with another update. I'll let you tell them. Basically, um, we still haven't met the surgeon. We're on day three. We haven't met the surgeon and probably won't meet him until Monday or Tuesday. It's a Saturday right now, September 25th. So we have to wait another two to three days to meet with him. And then basically he'll determine if he'll have the surgery next week or if we'll go home and schedule the surgery for another day seems like there's two pretty critical patients that have to have surgery on Wednesday and based off of it how they respond to that surgery will determine whether or not Thomas gets his surgery next Friday so at the minimum uh, we're six days away from surgery assuming that all goes as planned. If not, they'll probably send us home and schedule the surgery for another day, which means <laughs> if he has surgery next Friday, which we hope he does, uh, we'll be in the hospital for about three weeks straight. And hospital food is only good for so <laughs> long. I forget the hospital food. It's just <laughs> being stuck in a box. Like... I don't know. Today is the worst day for me. Today has been the worst day so far to me. Because it's just like, yeah, we finally got like a plan, but really, was it really like nothing, still nothing is definite and until he's like being rolled into the oh. OR. It's really not going to be, even if they come in on Monday and say, okay, we're going to schedule him for Friday. We still don't know for sure because it all kind of depends on how the other patients do. And if they become more critical than him, because really he's doing well. But I'm really, the biggest thing is I'm like terrified to go home because I don't know. I don't really want to go home and watch my son continue to with heart failure like and I have to be well we have to be the ones to like keep an eye on him and know when to bring him in if things why are you smiling oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, down here I'm not a Debbie downer I'm just voicing my feelings right now because it is a lot of pressure to like put on a person to be in charge as someone who's not like a medical professional to be able to look out for like things that are going wrong and like I do my best and we've done a pretty good job so far of like knowing when he needs to come in I just that's the one thing I'm scared about is just if we have to take him home so how do you feel about everything the bright side <laughs> is that at least we've made a little bit of progress. Like, 
Yeah. We've been here this day three that we've been in LA. And this is the first time that anyone's really come to us with a plan. And every day we've, we've been here, we've heard, oh, the surgeon's gonna come talk to you. Or someone from surgery, from the surgical team's gonna come talk to you and give you a plan. Hasn't happened. Mm -hmm. And we came here this morning thinking on Saturday, he's not gonna be here, yeah. I'm not gonna hear anything. That's true. So we're waiting till Monday anyway. But the doctor here in the ICU came in and called a cardiologist who came in and talked to us and both were very kind and helpful. And they called the surgeon and talked to him and that's kind of when the plan was formed. So yeah. at least progress has been made. We've made communications. We've at least got a response, which we haven't to this point. Um, so I feel that at least things are moving and people are aware. I think what like part of what's difficult is like with Thomas obviously being our son, like we're sitting here on pins and needles and we want the surgery and, and it's obviously very aggravating for us as parents. But I think it's a good perspective to also remember like these two patients that are having surgery on Wednesday that could determine Thomas's fate are very critical patients is the way that they explain it to us. And so while our situation is not ideal and we don't like it one bit, uh, it's good perspective to remember that it could be worse. I mean, you yeah. uh, you walk around the unit here, walk by some of the rooms, and you see these kids that are intubated and you know have breathing machines, and um, and Thomas is currently off oxygen completely, and so yep. um, it is a good perspective to to know that even though like our situation sucks, um, it could be a lot worse. So. Yeah. It's all about finding the silver linings while stuck yeah. in a hospital room. Yeah. Lots of time to think about the stuff. And I agree that it, it was a nice surprise that we got to hear from someone today because I was, like, fully expecting to just kind of be in limbo until Monday. Which I still feel, I feel like we're just in a little bit more defined limbo. Like, it's still limbo, but at least, but at we, least, have at least we have an expectation. somewhat of some more information and, yeah, a little bit of an expectation. So. In the meantime, in the interim... Most likely today they'll move Thomas out of the pediatric ICU unit and put him some in the re regular pediatric unit, um, which is a good thing because it means he's not in critical condition of any kind, and it frees up a bed for someone who is. Yep. And they said apparently those rooms have more privacy, which I mean, I guess is I mean I don't know this room is fairly private, except the big window. There's like the a giant station. window. So that's most likely what will happen is we'll move to the peds unit today and hang out there till Monday or Tuesday till we hear from the surgeon and go from there. Yep, more waiting. So hurry up and wait. That's been the motto of the last week. So all right. Well, we'll keep this video updated, and that's all for now. Mm. How you doing, sir? Drinking your bottle? Yes. What a sweet boy. You are so silly. So, so silly. So silly. What are you doing? Making that noise. That's crazy, boy. Hi. What's that sound? Look at that cute boy. Yeah, he's cute. Oh, here's Daddy. Yeah, it's 
up on the video. Hi. Hello. We have an update. Say hello. Say hello. <laughs> Cutie guy. Yeah, we talked to the surgeon today. Um, Thomas is going to play with my hair. That's his, one of his favorite things to do. <laughs> He'll wrap his hand, his tiny hand, so tightly around my hair that I can't get it out. Um, so we talked to the surgeon today and everything seems to be on track for him to have surgery on Friday. Um, we had a little bit of a scary moment because on Sunday night, Sunday night, um, Thomas got a fever out of the blue. And so I was like terrified. I really thought that he was going to have another infection and that would just throw us totally off. And just like another thing for him to have to fight. I don't know. I was just really worried about it and really, um, I don't know. I feel like I had a little bit of like an out of body experience. Like I just felt like I can't believe this is happening. You know, thankfully they, um, so what they did was they did some tests on like his blood and his urine and, um, checked him for like viruses and infections and all that stuff. And everything came back negative. So kind of a fluke thing. He also had a, like a lot of redness around his G tube site. And so they're thinking maybe that was infected. Um, and so they they gave him antibiotics right away, which I think ended up kind of being a, a blessing in disguise that he was able to get antibiotics because that'll be great for him, extra protection for him leading up to the surgery. So actually it's a good thing. And I, you know, you think I would learn that <laughs> like God has a plan and he's protecting Thomas and all the things that I feel like have been something that's gone wrong. There's always been something amazing to come out of it um and something that's helped him he's just gonna go to town on my hair good job bubba what a grip um but yeah i i feel like maybe i've learned my lesson it's hard i mean i'm always gonna worry about my kids but um i really do think that god has thomas's back for sure and he's looking out for him and that was actually a good thing, even though it really was scary and I thought that it was gonna throw everything off and he was gonna have to go through that. Um, it ended up being totally fine and great. So um, they, his G-tube site looks a million times better, um, almost back to normal really. And we've been putting cream on it and he's been having antibiotics. And uh, yeah, we saw the surgeon today and we're on track for Friday. Today is Tuesday, so. We have a couple days until surgery. We're just really, really praying that he stays, you know, relatively healthy and like ready for the surgery. If one of these kids that's having surgery has any complications and they have to go back in, it could bump Thomas. So um, we're just praying for all those little kids too, that they'll their surgeries will go well um, for them, but also for us <laughs> because we want to keep um, everyone on schedule and get Thomas in as soon as. Um, as soon as possible so um he's doing great oh my gosh child oh my goodness i've just been trying to come up with things for him to do so that he's you know semi-entertained he's been in a hospital room slash hospital bed for nine days now the poor baby is just you know gotta be bored and he just lay lays here most of the time we try and pick him up for a little bit at a, at a time but it's just so hard with everything that's attached to him um, but that's where we're at. We're kind of just waiting around for it to be our turn. So that's the update for now. It's a good one. It's a happy one. We're really thankful and we're just hoping that everything goes to plan. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Make your music. Cute boy. Yeah. Good job. I do just want to note that I have noticed like a change in Thomas even since we were first um, admitted to the hospital. We've been in the hospital for nine days. So nine days ago to now, I feel like he's had a lot of changes. Like You can hear his breathing. Just really heavy. He's always had kind of abnormal breathing, but um, definitely not like this. Uh, his feeding has... Um, de you know, decreased. His oral feeds have decreased. Um. <laughs> Dude! 
dude, that hurts. You're strong. Yeah, we can just tell he gets tired. Like um, having him sit up for long periods of time, he starts getting tired. If we attempt tummy time, he does not love that anymore. He used to be all about tummy time. So yeah, I'm really anxious to to get this fixed so that he can start being himself again, start his life. Huh? Stop having so many complications. So we are beyond ready.